Daryl Ray played for the 2016 Villanova Wildcats National Championship team. He's part of the Processed Podcast along with Hunter Brody talking some Sixers, some NBA with us here on the Sports Bash Live. He appears to be the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. D-Ray, welcome back, man. What's up? Doing great, man. Doing great. Thanks for having me back on. How y'all been? We're doing good. We're hanging in there. I uh, wanted to get some uh, Sixers conversation rolling with you here because uh, Brett Brown on Friday had a Zoom chat with a lot of us here and a lot of takes. Mm -hmm. Number one, I want to, you know, the one thing that stood out to me, and I want to get your take on this, he mentions that he wants Joel and B to play about 38 minutes a game once they get to the playoffs. Now, now he plays about 30 minutes a game. So my question for you would be, can we judge what they do in the regular season and how these guys are being used if the plan is to change the way that they're being used in the play? In other words, like if I see the Sixers are like a 500 team or less than 500 team on the road, but Joel Embiid's only playing 30 minutes, and now all of a sudden he's playing 38. Does that kind of supersede what they did in the regular season if he's going to play more minutes? Uh, if he plays more effective minutes, then absolutely. I think we're at a point where we're realizing that these players are realizing how important the playoffs are. You know, you spoke about the last dance. That was one of the things Jordan says. Like, you can forget everything in the regular season when that, that playoff time comes up. Uh, you see what Kawhi did with Toronto. You know, they was like, oh, is it low management? Is he going to pull the same thing he did with the Spurs? And then he goes off in the playoffs and just annihilates everybody. So I really feel like if – when it matters, you know what I mean? If, if that 38 minutes when it matters gets us a championship and gets you all be better time, effective time, I'm for it. D-Ray, now one of the things Brett Brown mentioned was the starters playing 19 of the 65 games together. And, you know, you have a lot of experience playing at Villanova and learning new players and implementing new guys throughout your time there. How important is it? to be on the court and find a way to play with the players and, and get into a groove together? Oh, my God. It's it's very important. I'm not going to say it's the most important thing. I think everybody's individual work, uh, you know, helps bring them together and a product that could be a championship. But when it's time for the playoffs, you can't be worrying about like what a guy is going to do or thinking about how somebody's scheme is going to change up. Me and you had talked about it on the show with Jimmy Butler and saying that they had changed up the offensive scheme with him handling the ball uh, that year, you know, in the playoffs. Like, you don't – that's not a time of the year to be wondering what's going to happen on your side because so many things on the other side is unpredictable. So, I think guys learning each other's styles and meshing throughout the regular season is is very – very important if you want to win the championship. Now, uh, J.J. Redick had said uh, on a podcast that essentially he felt that the development of Embiid and Simmons, he didn't want to say were kind of stunted, but he did kind of say every year it's not easy for them and the coaching staff to have to implement all these new players. And you wonder, you see the Bucks; They've essentially had the same core group of guys for like the last three years. And how much that separates Milwaukee from, like, say, Philadelphia, whose roster has had consistent turnover, whereas the Bucks has been very consistent. No, absolutely, absolutely. But the Bucks are further along in their, and forgive me for this process, you know what I mean? I think everybody thinks, like, when Ben Simmons started to play and Joel B started to play and they got out there, you know what I mean, and, and they went out and got a few other pieces that the process was over. And we all remember them dog days of 2012, 13, and 14. It was terrible. But this isn't over, you know what I mean? I, I think if we can take anything from this documentary as far as 76ers fan goes, that it's a process. It takes a long time, you know what I mean? It takes a long time of building and etching out different rosters and getting rid of this guy and adding that guy and seeing this piece fits, seeing that piece fits. And you got guys who've been in this league for 10 years are just now starting to get their just due. And well, we gave these dudes $100 million plus million, so ain't nobody expecting it to take that long. But at the same time, like, be patient, you know what I mean? Be patient and still – it's still some uh, some etching out we got to do. Now, Brett Brown mentioned lessons from the last dance, and one of the ones, mm -hmm. one of the things that he brought up was the best player taking it by the throat and really being that player when needed. But he also said that it can be done by a committee. Do you believe that you can win a championship by committee, or do you need that one player, that MJ type player, to take a franchise to the promised land? No, nah, I definitely – I mean, that's how we won. You know, you mentioned Villanova, like, that's how we won. It wasn't one any one guy that was, like, head and shoulders above the rest that year um, necessarily. You know what I mean? I, I definitely think you can win by a committee. I think 
You should look at that Bulls team. They almost did it. You know, with Scottie Pippen and them, they were one bad decision, you know, of sitting out a, a play away from doing that. So I definitely think you could win by a committee. And I think he said that because he understands that there is no just outright alpha between Joel B, Tobias Harris, Ben Simmons, you know, and, and, and whoever else you want to throw in that mix. Like, it's going to take – a little bit of everybody to make it happen for the Sixers, but I'm fine with that because I've learned that usually in today's game, that's more consistent uh, success than just one guy outright, you know, killing everybody. Right. No, I, I think it's possible as well. I, I do think that you don't need that MJ mentality because let's be real. There's only one person that has that type of mentality and it was him. There's people who are close, but you know, with, with that unique right. mindset, not everybody has that. And, there's one phrase, though, that keeps getting brought up and brought up and brought up. And I believe that it's true, yet it bothers me so much. And I want to hear your perspective. The, the phrase is, we are built for the playoffs. And it is the reality, but I'm just so bothered by hearing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I am too. Especially when we get to the playoffs and it, it doesn't go a certain way. Obviously, this year is, a, you know, it's a bit of a, uh, a toss-up if they come back and we'll see. But... I like to have faith in Elton Brand. You know what I mean? I think that he's been around the block long enough to know what he's doing. Like I said, I think players, and hopefully this is when we see the season kind of get shortened up and more exciting, but players are more than aware. Like, them 82, I'm not saying they don't matter, but if you get to your 40, 50 win mark, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it really doesn't matter if you don't do your thing in the playoffs. You see that Golden State Warriors team a couple of years back, like, they kept teasing them like it don't mean a thing without a ring. If you don't end that with a championship or a great run throughout the playoffs, you know, for a mediocre team, a championship for a team that's expected to win it, then it doesn't mean anything. So why put all this time and energy into those first 82 games? So I, I definitely think it's, it's a point there. We're talking with Daryl Reynolds. Uh, uh, you remember him from the 2016 Villanova Wildcats championship team. You can follow him at Dre, uh, at Dre, the director on Twitter and you know, so much has been made about this season, and as Hunter just mentioned, like this team was built for the playoffs. But I'll, are they? Is this team built for the playoffs? Would you look at this roster and watch them during the regular season and kind of be like, huh, oh, but I see them succeeding in the playoffs with what they're doing. Do you look at this roster and say, I understand, even though we don't like to hear that it's built, do you see what they're talking about when you watch this roster? This year was a little tough. I ain't going to be at you. This year was a little tough uh, because of how rocky and how up and down the regular season was. You know what I mean? That home game advantage versus that whatever happened. They got hit by the damn Space Jam juice on the road. Like, it's a little <laughs> bit harder to believe that because at the end of the day in the playoffs, you do have to go on the road and win. But I, I think so. I think so. At the end of the day, there is no juggernaut that's uh, built for the playoffs. You might make it a little bit, but you're not going to win like that. You know, like Kobe has said that about the way uh, the Rockets were built around James Harden. He's like, he's like, it's a great team. It's great looking basketball. That doesn't win championships. So I think this defensive-minded team is definitely built for the playoffs. It's just it's, it's hard to argue with this year because it was such a just up-and-down roller coaster for them. So why? what is your opinion as to the home Versus the road. You you made a reference to that, and obviously teams play better at home, but this is a huge disparity one way to the other. They're historically good at home, and they're wretchedly bad on the road. So what is your hypothesis as to why this happened? A young team. A young team. I, I think you see it at every level. It's a lot easier to get up when you're comfortable, when you're in your arena, when you have your fans. Um and then when you get on the road, everything's against you. You know what I mean? Those are the teams that really win championships. Those teams almost relish for the opportunity to go on the road and take it from somebody. You know what I mean? And I don't think the Sixers are there just yet. Like, like I said, man, at the end of the day, they got that much money, so I get it. I am with y'all. Anybody out there saying, listen, this needs to happen now, damn straight. You know what I mean? You give somebody that much money, you expect it immediately. Um, but this is these guys are still figuring things out. And I'll go back to your point, Mike, like, all these roster changes, that doesn't help either. You know what I mean? This is a complete, not a completely different team, but we know with Jimmy Butler on that roster last year, this looks different. And he only got added in after the season started. Tobias Harris got added in after the season started. Like, you got all these guys trying to figure things out. And on that role, that pressure on that other team has their crowd. A lot of guys get exposed. And that's what's happening to us, unfortunately. Now, on Friday, 
Brett Brown gave us a little bit of an update on Ben Simmons, and he brought up the fact that he was actually vomiting from back pain. So, you know, to me, and, and you know this, what we've heard about Ben Simmons, because if the playoffs were going on right now, I don't know if we'd even have him. Like, what are your thoughts when you hear that Ben Simmons is in that much back pain after that Milwaukee Bucks situation that he was literally throwing up? That is crucial. Jeez. Like, that's a, that's a lot. I've never heard somebody throwing up from back pain. So if that was an over-exaggeration or, you know, it was some foul pizza in play or something, that's different. But uh, that was, damn, throwing up from back pain. That's a lot. Yeah. I, I don't see how a guy who's doing that could be ready right now. But the beauty of it is we ain't got to worry about it right now because they ain't playing. That that does sound crazy, though. And I, I feel like with, when you hear stuff like that, it's kind of hard to believe they're being transparent on what it really is. But it's the Sixers. I mean, come on. Like, do I have to bring it up? Like, <laughs> like, like not exactly the most transparent when it comes to players' injuries. You know what I mean? Unfortunately. Hey, uh, Daryl, when you look at Joel Embiid, do you see mm -hmm. a guy who is still has ways to go in terms of, not that he's, obviously he's been a very impactful player, but do you still see a guy who has a lot of growing to do in his game um, you know, he hasn't played a lot of basketball. We forget about that. This guy that barely has any high school, uh, very little college, uh, you know, background, and that he's kind of done this all on the fly after sitting out for two years. So do you see a, a guy who still has a lot of improvement still to do? Um, yes and no. And the reason I say that is because from a physical standpoint, from what his game seems to be, I don't see it changing much. Uh, you know, he, he can shoot. Obviously, he can dribble his ass off to be that tall. You know what I mean? He's a good finisher around around. He has a, a decent post game. I think if he had, like, one consistent post move that was unstoppable, I'm sorry. I'm a huge believer that he can hit that Dirk shot at a clip that, like, no, only him, Kevin Durant, and Dirk could really knock it down and it just be an unstoppable shot. I think the growth is going to come mentally. It's going to come him just being around the game and seeing different schemes and, We've all known that late in game situations, he just has this thing about like he has like these like mental like farts almost. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. just I, 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 you can't bypass that. You only get that from experience. How many players you see time and time again in their early years they make those mistakes because they just haven't been there enough times. I feel like that's what's going to happen with him. It's so funny we we game no we had a scout on. Uh, he was actually on the midday show today, but uh, we had a scout on about uh, two months ago who said. Forget Ben Simmons trying to shoot threes. That's an area of the game that Joel should keep working on because Ben doing it, that's great, but it's not, he's not going to ever be a guy who's going to really consistently hit that shot. But that Joel, if he worked at it, he could consistently hit that shot. It sounds like you kind of agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's already there. I don't, I don't understand. I think it's a, a young player thing to try to figure out what you don't do good and attack that and attack that and attack that. Figure out what you do good and then make yourself great at it. And he's a good, he's an okay three-point shooter. He could be a lot better, you know what I mean, as opposed to, man, you got to go shoot. It's like it's going to take forever to, to pull him out of that habit. So I, I agree with him. Uh, Daryl Reynolds, uh, at Dre, the director on Twitter, talking a little Sixers, a little NBA, and we'll uh, try to do some more of this as uh, we hope basketball is back somewhat soon, the playoffs um, and everything uh, with the NBA. We miss it, and now no more last dance as well. Uh, but Daryl, like August, uh, appeared via the Boardwalk Honda hotline. Thanks, D. My man, thank you for having me on. Yeah, All man. right, fellas. D. Ray, like August, appeared via the Boardwalk Honda hotline. Those 2016 Villanova Wildcats team. I remember them very fondly that year. Yes, as do I. Now, I told him on the most recent episode of Process that I truly believe that I could defend Michael Jordan better than anybody else. Yeah? Yeah. I bet you Jordan right now, what's he, almost 60? Yeah. He'd screw on you nonstop at 60 with an arm, uh, uh, arm tied behind his back. No shot. I take a charge. <laughs>